Views from Michael Lagavatel's 2D hand drawn animation desk looks like. Let's have a look at the 2D traditional hand drawn animation process of Greenhouse Animation Studios, shall we, folks? Here, Michael Lagavatel single handedly did the key animation on the sheets of pre-punched trophy animation paper using graphite drawing pencils and kneaded erasers. Later, Michael checks his key post drawings to see if they need in-betweens wrapped on paper or to digital if the key post drawings are to digitally cleaned up on the Adobe Character Animator CC on Michael's MacBook Pro using his Wacom and Tools tablet. For the record, this set of key post drawings featuring Michael's cartoony human blonde teenage boy character, Mike Patterson, will be in between traditionally using pencil and paper. And speaking of in betweens, Here's a final stack of animation drawings done in pencil on sheets of 12 field letters as animation paper featuring Michael's cartoony human 10 year old girl character, Amanda, Mc Amanda, I mean Amanda, who is actually Michelle's 10 year old sister, in betweens it all. Here, Michael takes in the completed Amanda animation drawings and puts together a pencil test for a smartphone device called an Apple iPhone. The scanning had to be done using notes on Michael's iPhone. The pencil test filming had to be done on Michael's iPhone using a traditional animation app called Digisoft Flippad. Let's have a look at the completed Amanda pencil test that was animated by Michael Gavateo and see for ourselves. One thing left behind from this pencil test is actuating sound effects. Coming up is the same pencil test Michael's already put together featuring Amanda's 10 year old younger sister Amanda McQuader, but with added sound effects. Uh, Not bad, Michael. However, Michael has completed the image twins for his Mike Patterson pencil test and he's brought, brought it to life on his iPhone via Digisoft flip pad. Let's take a look at the completed Mike Patterson pounce test animated by Michael Lagavateo, even with sound effects. And I do mean pencil test. The 
is a good start. This is a good start, even for slapstick comedy humor. A few weeks later, Michael took in the scanned drawings of his Mike Patterson animation and digitally inked and painted it in his iPad using Adobe Photoshop Mix. Then he would bring in the final composite frames to life in his iPhone in digital flip pad. He used the final color composition of Mike Patterson's cartoony platform, animated, digitally colored and composited by Michael Agapoteo, complete with silly cartoony sound effects. And here we go. Not bad, Michael, even in color. And I do mean digital color. It's, it's almost there. It's, no one's reaching to the stop. No one's there at the end. Thanks, Mom. What you just seen are some animation cycles of Bansy, animated by Michael Garvatel back in summer 2018. Here's a 30 second short film that Michael did for Don Bluth University called Animators at Work. Yep, glad. I hope you enjoy my uh, animation presentation that I did for the Henry Ford Museum. Yep, glad you appreciate it. Pretty, pretty good. It deserves two thumbs way up for my fandom and my fans, my family, my relatives, everyone. This makes it okay. I'm glad you like it. Glad you enjoyed everything, every, everything every moment of it, which makes it okay. I'm glad you appreciate it all. Question. What yes? did Henry, what did Henry Ford Museum do with it? They, did uh, they did, they want me to do a presentation. They asked me, uh, they asked me to do a presentation for them by Zoom meeting for Zoom, by, they asked me to do a, Henry Ford Museum asked me to do a presentation for them via Zoom live stream back in January of 2022. And I went ahead and took, I worked very hard on it by, by, and by the deadline and I got it done right on schedule. And the animation presentation I did, and I just did for the Henry Ford Museum had me working on a presentation reel and I got it done in time and I uploaded the Dropbox and I attended the live stream presentation on Henry Ford Museum and I got it. So you said you started it in January of 2022? The life the Henry Ford animation presentation I did for the Henry Ford Museum, yes. And this what you just saw was the one I did for the Henry Ford Museum back in January 2022, which is pretty cool. Yes. It didn't take very long. You did a job that was really fast. A job well done. And the, uh, luckily, luckily, the student film I did for Dominic University 
uh, was done in 2019. I had to get it done before my trip to Disneyland Resort in California to honor my birthday back in September of 2019. I had to get, I had to take my timing. Well, at least get it done before the wait for my to get it done before to a couple of days before my birthday. It's might have to carefully get it done before my trip to Disneyland. Um, th this is Ani. Uh, Miss Marguerite is wondering how long, Michael, it took you to make that video. My presentation reel took me up all took me about all month of December. Month of December. This past December. Yeah. It, wow. Yeah, it was. It took time. Yeah, thank you. I'm um this is Ani. I'm surprised it only took you one month. That was a lot of work. <laughs> yep, indeed it did. Yep, indeed it was a hard a lot of work, which is a good thing too. Totally. Too. Um, and, and I, I use hand and for the animation supplies, I use traditional hand drawn animation supplies, courtesy of Lightfoot Animation Limited and Canson art supply products, such as pre-punched animation paper. Black green pencils, which came out of Amazon. Color erase pencils, which use erasable color pencils I usually get off Amazon. And I also use some leftover animation supplies from Color to Color. And I also got, which I intend, I'm also intending, I'm also intending to get some more animation supplies from Lightfoot because it's still open. And it's still open because Lightfoot's still around, which makes it okay because we still have Lightfoot. And, and it would still have life because it's still in business. Michael, when did you start doing animation? I started doing animation for li for living in in, in two thousand in start in around two thousand seven when I first got my when I first got my tentacular starter kit for my birthday. It was pretty cool. The tentacular starter kit I got came out of Whitefoot, which is pretty cool, and I. First got my Caulfield Pro Pro Grade double pegged animation disc cartoon color in the all this season of 2012. I still have it. Well, attached to my Alan Gordon Fax Richardson animation disc and uh that I got in 2013. Michael, I, I'm wondering with, with just with the Prattfall, like the girl characters Prattfall. How many images do you have to draw just to get that little segment? And how long does it take you to draw all of them? It took me a week to get us. It took me approximately a week up, up from a week to more a week and a few days to get one second of animation done, like 24 drawings per second. Wow. Yeah. And that <laughs> luckily there's more than, more than 24 frames in each in that in, the, in scenes like those like up to uh like almost 70 drawings in those shots what what's an in between an in between is an animation drawing like animation thing in the hand draw animation and 2d digital animation you think it's pretty i learned it is like you're taking the key drawings you in between them, like you play in betweens, and you so, get more floor fluid animation in the timing. Okay, that's that's kind of what I was I was wondering. So you have like your key drawings that get you the basic movement, but then you need the in betweens to make it more fluid. Yes, just like the Disney, just like the classic Disney animation, even in the nineties. And then how how do you line up the pictures so that they're all? You know, within the same frame. You know what I mean? If they like, you have I to usually, take a picture of each one of these, right? I usually have them animated on ones a lot, while a couple, a few shots had to be animated on twos. Well, most of it will definitely be animated on ones via via Disney Disney films for the nineties. I have to pay tribute. I always do a tribute to the timing of the animated Disney films of the 90s. Because I have to give my animation timing a 90s resonance Disney vibes and the animation fluid timing. Mm -hmm. To be have the animation composited and 
animated on ones and a few few shots on twos, according to the expo, according to the animation X sheets asked for. I timed the X sheets. I always time my X sheets. I got from Lightfoot. I was used to order off cartoon color, but since they died out of fashion, I currently get my animation X sheets and my animation paper and sells and other supply animation supplies from light from the different a brand new kind of animation supply shop that's currently in business as of the mid 2000s called Lightfoot, which is headquartered in Temecula, California. And the only animation vinyl acrylic paint I get from a different nowadays, which is based in which is is actually the base is actually West Mexico, California based art supply warehouse. Because they sell a different kind of cell vinyl paint, they sell called Tone Tones. Hmm. It's, it's a similar brand to cell vinyl, but called Tone Tones. So do you sometimes paint glass cells and sometimes you do the, the, the uh, coloring like on a Waco tablet or something like that? I use the, I actually use, I actually do uh, cells in a, I actually do do uh, limited edition cells and selling productions of animation drawings for a living. It's apart from doing uh, animation work to have the animation immediately uh, digitally. My, but luckily, most of my shorts will have to be uh, digitally inked and painted in the computer big time. Just like the 90s resident on Disney films like Aladdin, Lion King, Hercules, Beauty and the Beast, and Rescue is Down Under, and every other 90s Disney film up to until the mid 2000s. And like I said, I only use uh, cell vinyl paint, tune tones paint, acrylic paint, and all, and all cells and all that for making limited edition cells and uh, reproduction cells for living. Yeah, so you that just sell those as like artwork, right? My, but luckily they have Green Mouse characters on them for a living because I have always do that. I always have, but luckily they do have my own some of my own production cells and original homemade cells on on my on the wall in my room for display. Right. They're kind of like the uh, Disneyland art corner cells. They're kind of like the Disneyland art corner cells. They kind of like the Disneyland art corner cells, but handcrafted using a rather 12 year animation cells I picked up from Cartoon Color, but new ones ready to order off Lightfoot someday. Or these 9 by 12 inch acetate cells called Duolar that I picked that I usually pick up from Amazon to cut costs sometime. Mm. And I use a speedball acrylic. I use for the black India ink. I use Speedball, or just, I use Speedball, or I use Speedball, or any other. But it was Speedball. I use and for the India ink. I use a bottle of Speed. I use an ink bottle of Speedball India ink for a living. Yeah. For the ink, oh, pan ink in the out one. It's rather with a, a quote called dip pen or a skinny paintbrush. Well, but, it's amazing, but it's easier to handle a hand ink and using skinny paintbrush, just in case. And I am in the animatronic shows, the DIY animatronic shows, about working on a DIY animatronic fancy character. So it's similar to a, a free stage animatronic Chuck and Cheese character. But I'm planning to get save up for more, more materials to make him to like the steel metal for the Mac, some more cylinders to give the players 16. <coughs> Big one six for its pneumatic as a pneumatic movements and program blue software for it could program him in a Windows laptop. I need to save up for someday. And we'll have that all set up for him someday. And look with an air I'm going to get out a small air compressor in the garage for him. We'll hook it up to the character valve. But we need an air regulator, water filter, and oil oil trap system someday. That's to do airbrushing? And we also need the cosmetics. We also need the co we also need to do plush mask. It's a cost-effective alternative to latex mask because making a latex mask, I believe, might is cost prohibited and cause it costs too much. 
Mm-hmm. So does silicone mask. When I figured out a, a cost-effective way to cut costs on latex mask or silicone mask, which is the plush mask, to give the Banshee Tournament characters a plush-looking attire, plush-looking mm-hmm. feel on their the head to toe. Nice. Make them look like a animatronic stuffed animals, but they're Vansitronics <laughs> characters right. with plus masks. Very cool. Well, it's amazing work, Michael. I thank you so much for sharing that with us today. No problem. And I also, and I'm also into making walk around master cards from scratch, like the ones at Chuck E. Cheese and Disney theme parks too. Nice. All right. Um, this is Ani. There is a second video I have downloaded that's almost four minutes. Do we have time to watch that one too, or do we need to move? move? Luckily, there is time. If there is, I think, if you there, download I think it, we can watch that. Okay, just making sure I'm going to share my screen again. Um, then I will press play and just let me know if you can't hear my audio. I'll, I think I'll hear. I can hear it. You can be one because I hear it. It's to start with an, an oval shape for his, for his head and connect the line for the, the corner of its head. Then the, then the uh, dare I say it, the upper cross to locate his nose. You will have uh, the curved, curved construction for his cheeks. That way, you will have the uh, around his cheeks. Then we'll have the co- construct his mask for his face. Then we'll have the oval for his nose and the uh, a lot curved lines for his face. I mean, snout. My mistake. Snout. Then the uh, curved, more curved lines or arcs for his dimples. They connect the smile with another curved shape. Then what I like to do is add some outlines of more arcs, curved arcs to connect construct his eyebrows. And then what I will do next is to apply the. Uh, Another half a, a, short, a circle. And what I will do is do this and apply another elongated circle for his other ear. Another elongated circle for his inner ear. And with that said, you locate his ears. That's how you draw his ears, according to this. And then you have a curved arcs here and here for his head. You draw a three tufts here and another three tufts here to give his cheeks a little furry features. <laughs> and a buck to smile to give him a moth like features. And uh, you construct the eye construction. And what I like to do <laughs> is give him Eric Goldberg by him with the eyes and color in the pupils with my the graphite side. And then I would then color in his pupils and his nose to give him a give him texture. Apply your signature and give it a date of you of when the drawing is done. And with that said, that's how you draw Bansy.
Glad you glad you enjoyed the animation academy drawing tutorial video on how to draw a Banshee. Pretty glad. Yeah, that was great. <laughs>